the Lee Enfield bolt action, magazine fed, repeating rifle was the main firearm used by the military forces of the British Empire and Commonwealth during the first half of the 20th century. It was the British Army's standard rifle from its official adoption in 1895 until 1957. A redesign of the Lee Metford, the Lee Enfield superseded the earlier Martini Henry, Martini Enfield, and Lee Metford rifles. It featured a 10 round box magazine which was loaded with the .303 British cartridge manually from the top either one round at a time or by means of five round charges. The Lee Enfield was the standard issue weapon to rifle companies of the British Army and other Commonwealth nations in both the First and Second World Wars. Although officially replaced in the UK with the L1A1 SLR in 1957, it remained in widespread British service until the early mid-1960s and the 7.62mm L42 sniper variant remained in service until the 1990s. As a standard issue infantry rifle, it is still found in service in the armed forces of some Commonwealth nations, notably with the Indian Police and Bangladesh Police, which makes it the longest-serving military bolt-action rifle still in official service. The Canadian Forces Rangers Arctic Reserve Unit still use Enfield No. 4 rifles as of 2012, with plans announced to replace the weapon sometime in 2014 or 2015. Total production of all Lee Enfields is estimated at over 17 million rifles. The Lee Enfield takes its name from the designer of the rifles bolt system a Euro James Paris Le Euro, and the factory in which it was designated a Euro the Royal Small Arms Factory in Enfield. In Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and Southern Africa the rifle became known simply as the 303. Design and History The Lee Enfield rifle was derived from the earlier Lee Metford, a mechanically similar black powder rifle, which combined James Paris Lee's rear locking bolt system with a barrel featuring rifling designed by William Ellis Metford. The Lee action cocked the striker on the closing stroke of the bolt making the initial opening much faster and easier compared to the cock-on opening of the Morzig U98 design. The rear-mounted lugs place the bolt operating handle much closer to the operator, over the trigger, making it quicker to operate than traditional designs like the Morzig. The rifle was also equipped with a detachable sheet steel, 10-round, double-column magazine, a very modern development in its day. Originally. The concept of a detachable magazine was opposed in some British Army circles, as some feared that the private soldier might be likely to lose the magazine during field campaigns. Early models of the Lee Metford and Lee Enfield even used a short length of chain to secure the magazine to the rifle. The fast operating Lee bolt action and large magazine capacity enabled a well trained rifleman to perform the mad minute firing 20 to 30 aimed rounds in 60 seconds making the Lee Enfield the fastest military bolt-action rifle of the day. The current world record for aimed bolt-action fire was set in 1914 by a musketry instructor in the British Army Euro Sergeant Instructor Snokes All a Euro, who placed 38 rounds into a 12-inch wide target at 300 yards in one minute. Some straight-pull bolt-action rifles were thought faster, but lacked the simplicity, reliability and generous magazine capacity of the Lee Enfield. Several First World War accounts tell of British troops repelling German attackers who subsequently reported that they had encountered machine guns, when in fact it was simply a group of well-trained riflemen armed with SML EMK3 rifles. The Lee Enfield was adapted to fire the .303 British service cartridge, a rimmed, high-powered rifle round. Experiments with smokeless powder in the existing Lee Metford cartridge seemed at first to be a simple upgrade, but the greater heat and pressure generated by the new smokeless powder wore away the shallow, rounded, Metford rifling after approximately 6,000 rounds. Replacing this with a new square-shaped rifling system designed at the Royal Small Arms Factory Enfield solved the problem, and the Lee Enfield was born. Models marks of Lee Enfield rifle and service periods. Magazine Lee Enfield. The Lee Enfield rifle was introduced in November 1895 as the .303 caliber rifle, magazine, Lee Enfield, or more commonly magazine Lee Enfield, or MLE. The next year a shorter version was introduced as the Lee Enfield Cavalry Carbine MKI, or LEC, 
with a 21.2-inch barrel as opposed to the 30.2-inch one in the long version. Both underwent a minor upgrade series in 1899, becoming the MKI. Many LECs were converted to special patterns, namely the New Zealand Carbine and the Royal Irish Constabulary Carbine, or NZ and RIC Carbines, respectively. Some of the MLEs were converted to load from chargers, and designated charger loading Lee Enfields, or CLLEs. Short magazine Lee Enfield MKI, a shorter and lighter version of the original Lear Euro the famous rifle, short, magazine, Lee Enfield, or SMLEA Euro was introduced on January 1, 1904. The barrel was now halfway in length between the original long rifle and the carbine, at 25.2 inches. The SMLE's visual trademark was its blunt nose, with only the bayonet boss protruding a small fraction of an inch beyond the nozzle cap, being modelled on the Swedish Model 1894 cavalry carbine. The new rifle also incorporated a charger loading system, another innovation borrowed from the Morsa rifle. Notably the charger system is different from the fixed bridge that later became the standard, being a charger clip guide on the face of the bolt head. The shorter length was controversial at the time, many Rifle Association members and gunsmiths were concerned that the shorter barrel would not be as accurate as the longer MLE barrels, that the recoil would be much greater, and the sighting radius would be too short. Short Magazine Lee Enfield MK3 The iconic Lee Enfield rifle, the SMLE MK3, was introduced on January 26, 1907 along with a pattern 1907 sword bayonet and featured a simplified rear sight arrangement and a fixed, rather than a bolt head mounted sliding, charger guide. The design of the handguards and the magazine were also improved, and the chamber was adapted to fire the new MK7 high velocity Spizzer.303 ammunition. Many early model rifles, of magazine Lee Enfield, magazine Lee Metford, and SMLE type were upgraded to the MK3 standard. These are designated MK4 condition, with various asterisks denoting subtypes. During the First World War, the standard SMLE MK3 was found to be too complicated to manufacture, and demand was outstripping supply, so in late 1915 the MK3 was introduced, which incorporated several changes, the most prominent of which were the deletion of the magazine cutoff, and the long-range volley sights. The windage adjustment capability of the rear sight was also dispensed with, and the cocking piece was changed from a round knob to a serrated slab. Rifles with some or all of these features present are found, as the changes were implemented at different times in different factories and as stocks of existing parts were used. The magazine cutoff was reinstated after the First World War ended, and not entirely dispensed with until 1942. The inability of the principal manufacturers to meet military production demands led to the development of the pedaled scheme, which contracted out the production of whole rifles and rifle components to several shell companies. The SMLE MK3 saw extensive service throughout the Second World War as well, especially in the North African, Italian, Pacific and Burmese theatres in the hands of British and Commonwealth forces. Australia and India retained and manufactured the SMLE MK3 as their standard issue rifle during the conflict, and the rifle remained in Australian military service through the Korean War, until it was replaced by the R1A1 SLR in the late 1950s. The Lithgow Small Arms Factory finally ceased production of the SMLE MK3 in 1953. The rifle factory at Ishapur, West Bengal, India produced the MKIII until at least the 1980s, and continues to produce a sporting rifle based on the MKII action. Pattern 1913 Enfield, due to the poor performance of the .303 British cartridge during the Second World War from 1899 to 1902, the British attempted to replace the round, and the Lee Enfield rifle that fired it. The main deficiency of the rounds at the time was they used heavy, round-nosed bullets that had low muzzle velocities and poor ballistic performance. The 7mm Morsa rounds fired from the Morsa Model 1895 rifle had a higher velocity, flatter trajectory, and longer range, making them superior on the open country of the South African plains. 
work on a long-range replacement cartridge began in 1910 and resulted in the .276 Enfield in 1912. A new rifle based on the Morsa design was created to fire the round, called the Patton 1913 Enfield. Although the .276 Enfield had better ballistics, troop trials in 1913 revealed problems including excessive recoil, muzzle flash, and barrel wear and overheating. Attempts were made to find a cooler burning propellant, but further trials were halted in 1914 by the onset of World War I. This proved fortunate for the Lee Enfield, as wartime demand and the improved MK7 loading of the .303 round caused it to be retained for service. Patton 1914 USM 1917. The Patton 1914 Enfield and M1917 Enfield rifles are based on the Enfield designed P1913, itself a Morsa 98 derivative, are not based on the Lee action, and are not part of the Lee Enfield family of rifles, although they are frequently assumed to be. Interwar period. In 1926, the British Army changed their nomenclature. The SMLE became known as the Rifle No. 1 MK303, with the original MLE and LEC becoming obsolete along with the earlier SMLE models. Many MK3 and 3 rifles were converted to caliber training rifles, and designated Rifle No. 2, of varying marks. The SMLE design was fairly expensive to manufacture because of the many forging and machining operations required. In the 1920s several experiments were carried out to help with these problems, reducing the number of complex parts. The SMLE MK5 used a new receiver-mounted aperture sighting system, which moved the rear sight from its former position on the barrel. The increased gap resulted in an improved sighting radius, improving sighting accuracy and the aperture improved speed of sighting. The magazine cutoff was also reintroduced and an additional band was added near the muzzle for additional strength during bayonet use. The design was found to be even more complicated and expensive to manufacture than the MK3 and was not developed or issued beyond a trial production of about 20,000 rifles between 1922 and 1924 at RSAF Enfield. The No. 1 MK6 also introduced a heavier floating barrel that was independent of the forearm, allowing the barrel to expand and contract without contacting the forearm and interfering with the zero, the correlation between the alignment of the barrel and the sights. The floating barrel would also increase the accuracy of the rifle by allowing it to vibrate freely and consistently, whereas wooden foe runs in contact with barrels adversely affect the harmonic vibrations of a barrel. The receiver-mounted rear sights and magazine cutoff were also present and 1025 units were produced between 1930 and 1933. Rifle number 4. By the late 1930s the need for new rifles grew and the rifle, number 4 MKI was first issued in 1939 but not officially adopted until 1941. The number 4 action was similar to the MK6, but lighter, stronger, and most importantly, easier to mass produce. Unlike the SMLE, the No. 4 Lee Enfield barrel protruded from the end of the forestock. The No. 4 rifle was considerably heavier than the No. 1 MK. 3, largely due to its heavier barrel and a new bayonet was designed to go with the rifle, a spike bayonet, which was essentially a steel rod with a sharp point and was nicknamed pig sticker by soldiers. Towards the end of the Second World War, a bladed bayonet was developed, originally intended for use with the Sten Guna Euro, but sharing the same mount as the No. 4S Spike Bayonet a Euro, and subsequently the No. 7 and No. 9 blade bayonets were issued for use with the No. 4 rifle as well. During the course of the Second World War, the No. 4 rifle was further simplified for mass production with the creation of the No. 4 MKI in 1942 with a bolt release catch replaced by a simpler notch on the bolt track of the rifle's receiver. It was produced only in North America, by Long Branch Arsenal in Canada and Savage Stevens Firearms in the USA. The No. 4 MKI rifle was primarily produced in the United Kingdom. In the years after the Second World War the British produced the No. 4 MK2 rifle, a refined and improved No. 4 rifle with the trigger hung from the receiver and not from the trigger guard beech wood stocks and brass butt plates ones to reduce costs and to speed up rifle production. With the introduction of the No. 4 MK2 rifle, 
the British refurbished many of their existing stocks of No. 4 rifles and brought them up to the same standard as the No. 4 Mk2. No. 4 Mk1 rifles so upgraded were redesignated No. 4 Mki-2, whilst No. 4 Mki rifles that were brought up to Mk2 standard were redesignated No. 4 Mki-3. Rifle No. 5 Mk Euro the Jungle Carbine Later in the war the need for a shorter, lighter rifle led to the development of the rifle, No. 5 Mki with a severely cut down stock, a prominent flash hider, and a receiver machine to remove all unnecessary metal, the No. 5 was shorter and 2LB lighter. Despite a rubber butt pad, the .303 round produced too much recoil for the No. 5 to be suitable for general issue, and production ceased in 1947 due to an inherent fault in the design often said to be a wandering zero, and accuracy problems. However, the No. 5 Mki was popular with soldiers owing to its light weight, portability, and shorter overall length than a standard Lee Enfield rifle. The No. 5 was first issued to the British 1st Airborne Division and in use during their liberation of Denmark and Norway in 1945. An Australian experimental version of the No. 5 Mki, designated rifle, No. 6, MKI was also developed, using an SMLE MK3 as a starting point, as the Australian military never adopted the No. 4 MKI and was still producing the SMLE MK3. The No. 6 MKI never entered full production, and examples today are extremely rare and valuable to collectors. A shortened and lightened version of the SMLE MK3 rifle was also trialled by the Australian military and a very small number were manufactured at SAF Lithgow during the course of the Second World War. The term jungle carbine was popularized in the 1950s by the Santa Fe Arms Corporation, a U.S. importer of surplus rifles, in the hope of increasing sales of a rifle that had little U.S. market penetration. It was never an official military designation, but British and Commonwealth troops serving in the Burmese and Pacific theatres during World War II had been known to unofficially refer to the No. 5 MKI as a jungle carbine. Both the No. 4 and No. 5 rifles served in Korea. Lee Enfield conversions and training models, sniper rifles. During both World Wars and the Korean War, a number of Lee Enfield rifles were modified for use as sniper rifles. The Australian Army modified 1,612 Lithgow SMLE No. 1 Mk. 3 rifles by adding a heavy target barrel, cheek piece, and a World War I era pattern 1918 telescope, creating the SMLE No. 1 Mk. 3, which saw service in the Second World War, Korea, and Malaya and was used for sniper training through to the late 1970s. There is evidence that some SMLE No. 1 Mk. 3 sniper rifles were used by Australian forces during the later stages of the Vietnam War. During the Second World War, standard No. 4 rifles, selected for their accuracy during factory tests, were modified by the addition of a wooden cheek piece, and telescopic sight mounts designed to accept a No. 32 3.5x telescopic sight. The accuracy requirement was ability to place seven of seven shots in a five inches circle at 200 yards. The wooden cheek piece was attached with brass screws. The milled rear battle sight was ground off to make room to attach the number 32 telescope sight to the left side of the receiver. Each number 32 was matched and serial numbered to a specific rifle. This particular sight progressed through three marks with the MK1 introduced in 1942 the Mk2 in 1943 and finally the Mk3 in 1944. Many Mk3s and Mk2 first sets were later modified for use with a 7.62 on NATO L42A1 sniper rifle. They were known by the designation Telescope Straight, sighting L1A1. Initial production was 1,400 conversions of pre-war troop trials rifles at RSAF Enfield. Holland and Holland The famous British sporting gun manufacturers converted about 26,000 No. 4 Mk. I sniper rifles. The H and H conversions usually have the contractor code S51 on the buttstock. BSA Shirley undertook some conversions after their rifles were determined to be amongst the most accurate being produced. James Paday and Sons fitted special buttstocks later in the war. 
Canada converted about 500 rifles at Long Branch Arsenal. These rifles were extensively employed in various conflicts until the late 1960s, and when the British military switched over to the 7.62x51 NATO round in the 1950s, many of the No. 4 MKI sniper rifles were converted to the new caliber and designated L42A1. The L42A1 sniper rifle continued as the British Army's standard sniper weapon until the mid-1980s, being replaced by Accuracy International's L96.22 training rifles. Numbers of Lee Enfield rifles were converted to .22 caliber training rifles, in order to teach cadets and new recruits the various aspects of shooting, firearm safety, and marksmanship at a markedly reduced cost per round. Initially rifles were converted from obsolete magazine Lee Metford and magazine Lee Enfield rifles but from the First World War onwards SMLE rifles were used instead. These were known as .22 pattern 1914 short rifles during the First World War on rifle, No. 2 MK. 4 from 1921 onwards. They were generally single-shot affairs, although some were later modified with special adapters to enable magazine loading. A five-round .22 color is Parker Hiscock magazine was also developed and in service for a relatively short period during the later period of the First World War, but was subsequently withdrawn from issue due to reliability problems with its quite complicated loading and feeding mechanism. Number 2 MK. Four rifles are externally identical to a .303 caliber SMLE MK3 rifle, the only difference being the .22 caliber barrel empty magazine case, bold head and extractor which have been modified to fire .22 caliber rimfire cartridges. After the Second World War, the rifle, No. 7, rifle, No. 8 and rifle, No. 9, all .22 rimfire trainers and or target rifles based on the Lee action, were adopted or in use with cadet units and target shooters throughout the Commonwealth. In Britain, a .22 RF version of the No. 5 rifle was prototyped by the SA and trialled with a view to it becoming the British service training rifle when the .303 inches CF No. 5 was initially mooted as being a potential replacement for the No. 4 rifle. The C No. 7 rifle is a .22 single-shot manually fed training version of the No. 4 MKI rifle manufactured at Long Branch. Muskets and Shotguns Conversion of rifles to smoothbore guns was carried out in several locations, at various times, for varying reasons. SAF Lidgau, in Australia, produced shotguns based on the MKII action under the Zlazinger name, chambering the common commercial .410 shotgun shell. Commercial gunsmiths in Australia and Britain converted both MKII and No. 4 rifles to .410 shotguns. These conversions were prompted by firearms legislation which made possession of a rifle chambered in a military cartridge both difficult and expensive. Smoothboard shotguns could be legally held with far less trouble. RFI, in India, converted a large number of MKII rifles to single-shot muskets, chambered for the .410 Indian musket cartridge. These conversions were for issue to police and prison guards to provide a firearm with a much reduced power and range in comparison to the .303 cartridge. A further likely consideration was the difficulty of obtaining replacement ammunition in the event of the rifle's theft or the carrier's desertion. While British and Australian conversions were to the standard commercially available .410 shotgun cartridge the Indian conversions have been the source of considerable confusion. The Indian conversions were originally chambered for the .410 Indian musket cartridge, which is based on the .303 British cartridge, and will not chamber the common .410 shotgun cartridge. Many of these muskets were rechambered, after being sold as surplus, and can now be used with commercially available ammunition. Unmodified muskets require hand-loading of ammunition as the .410 Indian musket cartridge was not commercially distributed and does not appear to have been manufactured since the 1950s. Numerous attempts have been made to convert the various single-shot .410 shotgun models to a bolt-action repeating model by removing the wooden magazine plug and replacing it with a standard 10-round SMLE magazine. None of these is known to have been successful, 
though some owners have adapted three-round magazines for Savage and Stevens shotguns to function in a converted SMLE shotgun, or even placing such a magazine inside a gutted SMLE magazine. Non-military conversions and variants, from the late 1940s, legislation in New South Wales, Australia, heavily restricted .303 British caliber rifles, so large numbers of SMLEs were converted to wildcat calibers such as .303-25.303-22.303-270 in the popular 7.7x54 round. 303-25 caliber sporterized SMLEs are very common in Australia today, although ammunition for them has been very scarce since the 1980s. The restrictions placed on military caliber rifles in New South Wales were lifted in 1975, and many people who had converted their Lee Enfields to the Wildcat rounds converted their rifles back to .303 British. Post Second World War, SAF Lithgow converted a number of SMLE rifles to commercial sporting rifles, notably the .22 Hornet model under the Slazinger brand. In the early 1950s, Essential Agencies Limited of Toronto, Ontario, produced a run of several thousand number no. 4 Enfield rifles chambered in .303 British. Serial numbers below 6,000 were for civilian sale, serial numbers 6,000 and higher were built under contract to the Canadian government. Most of these were destined for service with the Canadian Rangers for the next 65 plus years. The CAF also used these as a survival rifle in the remote parts of Canada. L-59A1 drill rifle, the L-59A1 was a conversion of the No-4 rifle to a drill purpose rifle that was incapable of being restored to a firing configuration. It was introduced in service in the 1970s. A conversion specification of No. 1 rifles to L-59A2 drill purpose was also prepared but was abandoned due to the greater difficulty of machining involved and the negligible numbers still in the hands of cadet units. The L-59A1 arose from British government concerns over the vulnerability of Army Cadet Force and school combined cadet forces stocks of small arms to theft by terrorists, in particular the Irish Republican Army following raids on CCF armories in the 1950s and 1960s. Previous conversions to drill purpose of otherwise serviceable rifles were not considered to be sufficiently incapable of restoration to fearable state and were a potential source of reconversion spares. L-59A1 drill rifles were rendered incapable of being fired, and of being restored to a fearable form, by extensive modifications that included the welding of the barrel to the receiver, modifications to the receiver that removed the supporting structures for the bolts locking lugs and blocking the installation of an unaltered bolt, the removal of the striker's tip, the blocking of the striker's hole in the bolt head and the removal of most of the bolt body's locking lugs. Most bolts were copper-plated for identification. A plug was welded in place forward of the chamber, and a window was cut in the side of the barrel. The stock and fore-end was marked with broad white painted bands and the letters DP for easy identification. Special Service Lee Enfields, Commando and Automatic Models, Charlton Automatic Rifles. Small numbers of Lee Enfield rifles were built as, or converted to, experimental automatic loading systems, such as the British Howell and South African Reader and the best known of which was the Charlton Automatic Rifle, designed by a New Zealander, Philip Charlton in 1941 to act as a substitute for the Bren and Lewis gun light machine guns which were in chronically short supply at the time. During the Second World War, the majority of New Zealand's land forces were deployed in North Africa. When Japan entered the war in 1941, New Zealand found itself lacking the light machine guns that would be required for local defence should Japan choose to invade, and so the New Zealand government funded the development of self-loading conversions for the Lee Enfield rifle. The end result was the Charlton automatic rifle, which was issued to Home Guard units in NZ from 1942. Over 1,500 conversions were made, including a handful by Electrolux using Lithgow SML EMK3 rifles. The two Charlton designs differed markedly in external appearance, but shared the same operating mechanism. Most of the Charlton automatic rifles were destroyed in a fire after the Second World War, but a few examples survive in museums and private collections. 
De Lisle Commando Carbine. The commando units of the British military requested a suppressed rifle for eliminating sentries, guard dogs and other clandestine operational uses during the Second World War. The resulting weapon, designed by W.G. De Lisle, was effectively an SML EMK3 receiver redesigned to take a .45 ACP cartridge and associated magazine, with a barrel from a Thompson submachine gun and an integral suppressor. Elkins Automatic Rifle The Elkins Automatic Rifle was one of the numerous attempts to convert a Lee Enfield SMLE to an automatic rifle. Similar developments were the South African Rigger and Charlton of Australian New Zealand origin. Howard Francis Machine Carbine the Howard Francis self-loading carbine was a conversion from a No. 1 MK3 SMLE to the 7.63 X25 Amorza pistol cartridge. It fired in semi-automatic only and suffered some feeding and extraction problems and, despite meeting accuracy and soundness of design concept, never made it past prototype stage. Very light and very short carbine. Howard Automatic Rifle the Howell automatic rifle was the first attempt to convert the Lee Enfield SMLE into a semi automatic rifle. The weapon was reliable but unergonomic for the user as the force of the recoiling bolt interfered with handling. The Howell automatic rifle was used by the British Home Guard as an anti aircraft weapon. Rigger automatic rifle The Rigger automatic rifle was an automatic Lee Enfield SMLE rifle of South African origin. The Rigger device could be installed straight away without the use of tools. Conversion to 7.62A, 51mm NATO, during the 1960s, the British government and the Ministry of Defence converted a number of Lee Enfield No. 4 rifles to 7.62A, 51mm NATO as part of a programme to retain the Lee Enfield as a reserve weapon. The Lee Enfield No. 4 series rifles that were converted to 7.62 on NATO were redesignated as the L8 series of rifles with the rifles being refitted with 7.62 on NATO barrels, new bolt faces and extractor claws, new rear sights and new 10-round 7.62 on NATO magazines that were produced by RSAF Enfield to replace the old 10-round .303 British magazines. The appearance of the L8 series rifles were no different from the original No. 4 rifles, except for the new barrel and magazine. The L8 series of rifles consisted of L8A1 rifles, L8A2 rifles, L8A3 rifles, L8A4 rifles, and L8A5 rifles. Sterling Armaments of Dagenham, Essex produced a conversion kit comprising a new 7.62mm barrel, magazine extractor and ejector for commercial sale. The main difference between the two conversions was in the cartridge ejection arrangement. The Enfield magazine carried a hardened steel projection that struck the rim of the extracted case to eject it, the Sterling system employed a spring-loaded plunger inserted into the receiver wall. The results of the trials that were conducted on the L8 series rifles were mixed and the British government and the Ministry of Defence decided not to convert their existing stocks of Lee Enfield No. 4 rifles to 7.62 on NATO. Despite this, the British learned from the results of the L8 test programme and used them in successfully converting their stocks of No. 4 sniper rifles to 7.62 on NATO, which led to the creation of the L42A1 series sniper rifles. In the late 1960s, RSAF Enfield entered the commercial market by producing No. 4-based 7.62x 51mm rifles for sale. The products were marketed under alliterative names for example Enfield Envoy, a rifle intended for civilian competition target shooting and Enfield Enforcer, a rifle fitted with a PECAR telescopic sight to suit the requirements of police firearms teams. Ishapur 2A-2A1 at some point just after the Sino-Indian War of 1962, the Ishapur Rifle Factory in India began producing a new type of rifle known as the Rifle 7.62 M2A, which was based on the SML EMK3 and was slightly redesigned to use the 7.62 M NATO round. Externally the new rifle is very similar to the classic MK3, with the exception of the front sight protectors, butt plate and magazine which is more square than the SMLE magazine, and usually carries 12 rounds instead of 10, 
although a number of 2A1S have been noted with 10-round magazines. Ishapur 2A and Ishapur 2A1 receivers are made with improved steel and the extractor is redesigned to suit the rimless cartridge. From 1965 a Euro 1975, the sight ranging graduations were changed from 2000 to 800, and the rifle redesignated rifle 7.62 m 2A1. The original 2000 yards rear sight arm was found to be suitable for the ballistics of the 7.62 x51 NATO which is around 10% more powerful which equates to a flatter trajectory than that of a .303 British MKVI ammunition, so it was a simple matter to think of the 2000 as representing meters rather than yards. It was then decided that the limit of the effective range was a more realistic proposition at 800 AM. The Ishapur 2A and 2A1 rifles are often incorrectly described as .308 conversions. The 2A-2A1 rifles are not conversions of .303 caliber SML EMK3 rifles. Rather, they are newly manufactured firearms and are not technically chambered for commercial .308 Winchester ammunition. However, many 2A-2A1 owners shoot such ammunition in their rifles with no problems although it should be noted that some factory-loaded .308 Winchester cartridges may appear to generate higher pressures than 7.62 on NATO, even though the rounds are otherwise interchangeable, however this is due to the different systems of pressure measurement used for NATO and commercial cartridges. See the Wikipedia article on the Ishapur 2A1 rifle for further details. Production and Manufacturers in total over 16 million Lee Enfields had been produced in several factories on different continents when production in Britain shut down in 1956, at the Royal Ordnance Factory ROF Fazakerley in Liverpool after that factory had been plagued with industrial unrest. The machinery from ROF Fazakerley was sold to Pakistan Ordnance Factories in Rawalpindi where production and repair of the No. 4 rifle was continued. Also contributing to the total was the rifle factory Ishapur at Ishapur in India, which continued to produce the SMLE in both .303 and 7.62 on NATO until the 1980s, and is still manufacturing a sporting rifle based on the SMLE MK3 action, chambered for a .315 caliber cartridge the Birmingham Small Arms Company factory at Shirley near Birmingham, and SAF Lithgow in Australia who finally discontinued production of the SML EMK3 with a final machinery proving batch of 1,000 rifles in early 1956. Using 1953 dated receivers. During the First World War alone, 3.8 million SMLE rifles were produced in the UK by RSAF Enfield, BSA, and LSA. List of manufacturers. The manufacturers' names found on the MLE, CLLE and SMLE MK Euro MK3 rifles and variants are. Note 1, SSA, and NRF markings are sometimes encountered on First World War dated SMLE MK3 rifles. These stand for Standard Small Arms, and National Rifle Factory, respectively. Rifles so marked were assembled using parts from various other manufacturers as part of a scheme during the First World War to boost rifle production in the UK. Only SMLE MK3 rifles are known to have been assembled under this program. Note 2, GRI stands for Georgius Rex, Imperator, denoting a rifle made during the British Raj. RFI stands for Rifle Factory, Ishapur, denoting a rifle made after the partition of India in 1947. For the No. 4 MKI, No. 4 MKI and No. 4 MK2 rifles. Note 1, Second World War UK production rifles had manufacturer codes for security reasons. For example, BSA Shirley is denoted by M47C, ROF, M, is often simply stamped M, and BSA is simply stamped B. Note 2, Savage made Lee Enfield No. 4 MKI and No. 4 MKI rifles are all stamped U.S. property. They were supplied to the U.K. under the Lend-Lease program during the Second World War. No Savage Lee Enfields were ever issued to the U.S. military. The markings existed solely to maintain the pretense that American equipment was being lent to the U.K. rather than permanently sold to them. Australian International Arms No. 4 MK4 
the Brisbane-based Australian International Arms also manufactures a modern reproduction of the No. 4 Mk2 rifle, which they market as the AIA No. 4 Mk4. The rifles are manufactured by parts outsourcing and are assembled and finished in Australia, chambered in 7.62 x 51 m NATO and feed from modified M14 magazines. The No. 4 Mk4 is designed with a modern shooter in mind, and has the ability to mount a telescopic sight without drilling and tapping the receiver. AIA also offers the AIA M10A1 rifle, a jungle carbine start version chambered in 7.62 x 39 m Russian, which uses AK-47 magazines in late 2009. The supply of these firearms has been limited that some models are now unavailable in Australia. Magazine supply importation whilst legal in Australia, it has been spasmodically curtailed by Australian Federal Customs. It is possible to obtain a 10-round M14 magazines for the M10B2 match rifles in particular, provided an import permit from the appropriate licensing services division can be obtained in some states, yet Australian Federal Customs may still refuse importation on no valid grounds. Kuiper Pass Copies a number of British service rifles, predominantly the Martini Henry and Martini Enfield, but also the various Lee Enfield rifles, have been produced by small manufacturers in the Khyber Pass region of the Pakistani-Afghan border. Khyber Pass copies, as they are known, tend to be copied exactly from a master rifle, which may itself be a Khyber Pass copy, markings and all, which is why it's not uncommon to see Khyber Pass rifles with the N and Enfield reversed amongst other things. The quality on such rifles varies from as good as a factory-produced example to dangerously unsafe, tending towards the latter end of the scale. Kyber Pass copy rifles cannot generally stand up to the pressures generated by modern commercial ammunition, and are generally considered unsafe to fire under any circumstances. Kyber Pass copies can be recognized by a number of factors, notably, spelling errors in the markings. As noted the most common of which is a reversed N in Enfield, via ciphers dated after 1901. Queen Victoria died in 1901, so any rifles made after 1901 should be stamped ER, or GR. Generally inferior workmanship, including weak soft metal, poorly finished wood, and badly struck markings. Armelin, British company Armelin Limited developed a number of rifles based on the Lee Enfield No. 4. The PC Gallery rifle is a carbine and pistol and revolver calibers, the AL-42 a 5.56 arm rifle and the AL-30C, a carbine and .30 carbine. The Lee Enfield and military police use today. The Lee Enfield family of rifles is the second oldest bolt-action rifle designed still in official service, after Mosina Euronegant. Lee Enfield rifles are used by reserve forces and police forces in many Commonwealth countries, including Malawi, and particularly Canada, where they are the main rifle issued to the Canadian Rangers and the Royal Canadian Air, Army and Sea Cadets, and India, where the Lee Enfield is widely issued to reserve military units and police forces. Indian police officers carrying SML EMK3 and Ishapur 2A1 rifles were a familiar sight throughout railway stations in India after Mumbai train bombings of 2006 and the November 2008 Mumbai attacks. They are also still seen in the hands of Pakistani and Bangladeshi second line and police units. However, the Lee Enfield was mainly replaced in mainline service in the Pakistani police in the mid 1980s by the AK 47 in response to increasing proliferation of the Kalashnikov in the black market and civilian use. In Jordan, the Lee Enfield was in use with the police and gendarmerie until 1971, and with the armed forces until 1965. In Iraq and Egypt, the Lee Enfield was replaced by the Kalashnikov as the standard issue rifle in armed forces by the late 1950s, and in police forces by the late 1970s. In the UK, the single shot .22 calibre rifle No. 8 is in regular use with UK cadet forces as a light target rifle. Used as a drill weapon and in ceremonial functions by the Sri Lankan military, one was used by Vijitharuana to attack Indian Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi in 1987. Many Afghan participants in the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan were armed with Lee Enfields. The CIA's Operation Cyclone provided hundreds of thousands of Enfields to the Mujahideen, 
funneling them through Pakistan's ISI. CIA officer Gustav Rakatos later arranged for the Egyptian Ministry of Defense to set up production lines of Enfield.303 ammunition specifically for the conflict. Later on when Avrakatos asked Michael Vickers to revamp their strategy, he stopped the Enfield system and, with the large amounts of money available thanks to Charlie Wilson, replaced them with a mix of modern weapons like AK-47s and mortars. Khyber Pass copies patterned after the Lee Enfield are still manufactured in the Khyber Pass region today, as bolt-action rifles remain effective weapons in desert and mountain environments where long-range accuracy is more important than rate of fire. Lee Enfield rifles are still popular in the region, despite the presence and ready availability of more modern weapons such as the SKS-45, the AKM, the Chinese Type 56 assault rifle, and the AK-74. As of 2012, Lee Enfield rifles are still being used by the Taliban insurgents against NATO allied forces in Afghanistan. Photos from the recent civil war in Nepal showed that the government troops were being issued SMLE MK33 rifles to fight the Maoist rebels, and that the Maoists were armed with SMLE rifles as well. Lee Enfield rifles have also been seen in the hands of both the Naxalites and the Indian police in the ongoing Maoist insurgency in rural India. The Lee Enfield in civilian use, Lee Enfields are very popular as hunting rifles and target shooting rifles. Many surplus Lee Enfield rifles were sold in Australia, Canada, New Zealand, South Africa, the United Kingdom and the United States after the Second World War, and a fair number have been sporterized, having had the front furniture reduced or removed and a scope fitted so that they resemble a bolt-action sporting rifle. Top-notch accuracy is difficult to achieve with the Lee Enfield design, as it was intended to be a battle rifle rather than a sharpshooter's weapon, and thus the Enfield is nowadays overshadowed by derivatives of Paul Moore's design as a target shooting arm. They did, however, continue to be used absolutely up into the 1970s with some success, and continue to perform extremely well at military service rifle competitions throughout the world. Many people still hunt with as issued Lee Enfield rifles, with commercial .303 British ammunition proving especially effective on medium-sized game. Soft .303 ammunition is widely available for hunting purposes, though the Mark 7 military cartridge design often proves adequate because its tail-heavy design makes the bullet your violently and deform after hitting the target. The Lee Enfield rifle is a popular gun for historic rifle enthusiasts and those who find the 10-round magazine, loading by charger clips and the rapid bolt action useful for practical rifle events. Since formation in 1998, organizations such as the Lee Enfield Rifle Association have greatly assisted in not just preserving rifles in shooting condition, but holding events and competitions wholly accurate in terms of the various courses of fire and targets of the period. Lee Enfields are also popular with competitors in service rifle competitions in many British Commonwealth countries a Euro notably Australia, which boasts a very active military service rifle shooting community. The Lee Enfield series is very popular for service rifle shooting competitions in Great Britain and Australia due to the prohibitions on the legal ownership of semi-automatic centrifire rifles in Great Britain and restrictions on the legal ownership of semi-automatic centrifire rifles in Australia. Rhineland Arms produces .45 ACP conversion kits for the Lee Enfield action using M1911 pistol magazines. Users Afghanistan, Australia, No. 1 MKII MKII manufactured at Lithgow Arsenal in Lithgow, New South Wales, a Bangladesh, extensively used during 1971 war. A Belgium, Post WW2 British donations and used by Belgian soldiers in the Korean War until 1952. A Canada, No. 4 MKI MKI manufactured at Long Branch Arsenal in Long Branch, Ontario, Canada. Still used by the Canadian Rangers as of 2014. A France. Also used during WW2 by the French resistance and some captured from the resistance were used by the pro German French militia Milice Frenner Section S. A Fiji, a kingdom of Greece, used by Hellenic armed forces during World War II and post-World War II period. Greece used the Lee Enfield and British small arms until they were replaced by the M1 Garand and American small arms. An Iceland, 
once used by Icelandic Coast Guard and National Police of Iceland. A India, made under license by Ishapur Rifle Factory, A Indonesia, used by Republicans in Indonesian National Revolution. Some were taken from the Dutch. An Italy, post World War II Italian Army and Navy, Kingdom of Iraq, an Ireland, both No 1 MKII 3 and No 4 were used by Irish Defence Forces. A Israel, used during the first few years of independence. A Jamaica, still used by the Jamaica Constabulary Force, Correctional Services and Jamaica Combined Cadet Force, a Jordan, a Katanga, bought for police force but also used by Army, a Kenya, a Luxembourg, used by the Luxembourg Detachment in the Korean War, a Malaysia, a Myanmar, still used in Myanmar Police Force, a Netherlands, post WWIIUs, AA in Nepal, a Norway, a New Zealand, an Ottoman Empire, captured rifles, used as reserve weapons. A Pakistan, a Poland, used by the Polish Exiled Army, a Portugal, used by the Portuguese Expeditionary Corps, during the First World War, a Singapore, reserve units until the late 1960s. Still used by Singapore Armed Forces Military Police Command for ceremonial purposes. A South Africa, a Tibet, a Thailand, a Trinidad and Tobago, Trinidad and Tobago Cadet Force, a Turkey, converted Ottoman captured rifles to 7.92A, 57mm Morza. A Uganda, a United Kingdom and Colonies, a United States, used by units of the American Expeditionary Force attached to British and Australian units during the First World War. Number 4 MKI MKI rifles manufactured by Savage Stevens Firearms under Lend Lease for the British and Commonwealth Forces during WWII. Some U.S. Army units attached to British Commonwealth units in Burma during WWI were issued Lee Enfield rifles on logistics grounds. See also, Table of Handgun and Rifle Cartridges, Notes. References, UK NRA A Euro Historic Arms Resource Centre A Euro Enfield and Lee Enfield Training Rifles Reference Pages, A Section 11715, List of Changes in British War Material. H.M. Stationer's Office, Periodical, in Wright, John. Central Fires in Australia Euro 1948 and on. Australian Shooters Journaler, Griffiths, Clary 1948. Yes, I remember. Australian Shooters Journaler, Hogg, Ian V. The Complete Illustrated Encyclopedia of the World's Firearms. A&W Publishers. ISBN A 978-0-89479-031-7 Sazanidis, Christos. I plus or minus I O I Euro I I plus or minus I I per mil I one half I I I I registered trademark I one half I per mil I one half. Thessaloniki, Marindrosa, Skeneton, Ian. The Lee Enfield. Gold Coast QLD, Arms and Military Press. ISBN A 0 949749 82 6 Ian. Small Arms Identification Series No. 19, Australian SMLE Variations. Gold Coast QLD, Arms and Military Press. ISBN A 0 949749 49 4 Ian. Small Arms Identification Series No. 18, 7.62 mm L42A1 Sniper, L39A1, 2A and Lee Enfield Conversions. Labrador, QLD, Arms and Military Press. ISBN A 0-949749-48-6 Skeneton, Ian. Small Arms Identification Series No. 12. Special Service Lee Enfields. Gold Coast QLD, Arms and Military Press. ISBN A 0 949749 29 Xer, Skeneton, Ian. Small Arms Identification Series No. 14.303 Lewis Machine Gun. Gold Coast QLD, Arms and Military Press. ISBN A 0 949749 42 7 Skeneton, Ian. 
Small Arms Identification Series No. 7, Point three zero three Magazine Lee Metford and Magazine Lee Enfield. Gold Coast QLD, Arms and Military Press. ISBN A 0 949749 25 7 A, Skeneton, Ian. Small Arms Identification Series No. 4, Point three zero three Rifle, No. 5 MKI Gold Coast QLD, Arms and Military Press. ISBN A 0 949749 21 4 Skeneton, Ian. Small Arms Identification Series No. 2, Point three zero three Rifle, No. 4, Marks I and I, Marks 1 half, 1 third and 2. Gold Coast QLD, Arms and Military Press. ISBN A 0 949749 20 6 Skeneton, Ian. Small Arms Identification Series No. 1, Point three zero three Rifle, No. 1. SMLE Marks 3 and 3. Gold Coast QLD, Arms and Military Press. ISBN A 0 949749 19 2A, Skeneton, Ian. The Lee Enfield Story. Gold Coast QLD, Arms and Military Press. ISBN A 1 85367 138XA, Smith. WHB 1943 Basic Manual of Military Small Arms. Harrisburg, PA, Stackpole Books. ISBN A 0 8117 6 a War Office. Textbook of Small Arms 1929. London, Dural, HMS O'Rick Landers. Wilson, Royce. SMLE, The Short Magazine Lee Enfield MK3. Australian Shooter Magaziner, Wilson, Royce. Jungle Fever, The Lee Enfield .303 Rifle. Australian Shooter Magaziner, Wilson, Royce. Straight Up With a Twist, The Martini Enfield .303 Rifle. Australian Shooter Magaziner, External Links, Demonstration of Rapid Aimed Fire at Psley, Demonstration of Rapid Fire a Euro 10 Aimed Shots in 9 Seconds. Rigger Automatic Rifle Attachment